American Chopper, which debuted in September 2002, was a groundbreaking reality TV series. It stood out as one of the first reality shows of its kind, adopting a documentary-style approach that focused on a business and its core team. The show delved into the interactions between the team members, their relationships with clients, and the diverse builds and projects undertaken by the company. Set in the motorcycle custom shop Orange County Choppers in New York, American Chopper captivated audiences with its extraordinary custom bikes and cultivated a dedicated fan base intrigued by the workplace dynamics, particularly the drama between the father and son duo. While intense arguments, both among family members and with employees, led to controversial moments, the remarkable craftsmanship involved in designing and assembling the bikes always justified the tension. Despite its success, American Chopper concluded in 2010, though it has experienced several spin-offs and revivals since then. This prompts the question of what happened to key figures like Paul Tutul, Sr., Vinnie DiMartino, Paul Jr., and the rest of the crew after the show departed from television screens. In this exploration, we'll uncover the post-American Chopper lives of these reality stars and discover their endeavors since leaving the show. Paul Tuttle Sr. Paul Tuttle Sr., the founder and owner of Orange County Choppers, has successfully navigated the challenges of the motorcycle business, ensuring the continued existence of his iconic company. In a strategic move, Sr. decided to relocate his longtime New York-based custom motorcycle business to the sunny state of Florida, announcing the move in late 2020. This decision aimed to bring a new energy to the company and further fuel Sr.'s passion for crafting exceptional bikes. Before solidifying Orange County Chopper's legacy, Sr. ventured into creating another reality television series, Orange County Choppers, American Made. Unfortunately, this endeavor faced numerous obstacles, hindering its success. Lack of financial backing prompted Sr. to seek external investment for the show, leading him to persuade Thomas Derbyshire to invest in the project. However, complications arose when the approved funds were redirected towards Sr.'s personal interests, like fishing trips, causing delays in filming and sparking dissatisfaction from Derbyshire. The situation escalated when Derbyshire filed a lawsuit against Sr. in April 2017, accusing him of fraud due to misappropriation of funds for personal expenses. The legal battle intensified as Sr. attempted to renegotiate ownership shares, resulting in a 50-50 agreement dispute after the initial 51-49 arrangement. Unfortunately for Sr., he lost the legal battle, and the planned show never progressed beyond the planning phase. To mitigate financial strain, Paul Sr. decided to put his lavish New York estate on the market. Originally listed for $2.9 million, the sprawling 39-acre property located in Montgomery, New York, failed to attract buyers at the initial price point. In an attempt to expedite the sale, Sr. repeatedly dropped the price, and by 2019, the property was listed with an asking price of $1.6 million. Currently, Paul Sr. has joined forces with Keith Overton, a resort entrepreneur and avid motorcycle enthusiast, in a joint venture to expand the Orange County Choppers brand. The collaboration involves showcasing approximately 15 of Paul's most iconic motorcycle builds. This strategic partnership reflects Sr.'s commitment to preserving and growing the legacy of Orange County Choppers, Reflecting on his team's dedication and loyalty, Sr. expressed pride in their relentless work ethic, emphasizing their commitment to excellence. He highlighted the satisfaction of clients and the impressive appearance of the bikes as crucial indicators of success in the business. This joint venture with Keith Overton represents a new chapter for Orange County Choppers, symbolizing resilience and adaptability in the ever-evolving world of custom motorcycles. For enthusiasts eager for behind-the-scenes insights, a brief respite came in the form of a short-lived podcast titled Behind the Scenes at OCC.
available on various podcast platforms. The podcast offered a glimpse into the inner workings of Orange County choppers and the personalities behind the custom choppers. Adding another dimension to his ventures, Paul Sr. established OCC Roadhouse and Musum in Florida in 2021. This multifaceted establishment serves as a restaurant, concert venue, and museum, providing a unique experience for fans and visitors alike. The museum likely showcases some of the iconic motorcycles that have rolled out of Orange County Choppers over the years. Continuing to be at the helm of all things Orange County Chopper, Paul Sr. organized the 2023 Invitational Bike Show, a testament to his enduring commitment to the custom motorcycle world. The event likely featured an array of exceptional bikes, each a reflection of the craftsmanship and innovation synonymous with Orange County Choppers. Paul Tuttle Jr. Paul Tuttle Jr., a skilled metal worker since the age of 12, has carved his own impressive path in the world of custom motorcycles. Despite owning a 20% stake in his father's company, Orange County Choppers, which they co-founded in 1999, tensions between father and son eventually led to Paul Jr.'s departure from the family business. Following his dramatic exit from Orange County Choppers, OCC, and the American Chopper Series, Paul Tootle Jr. embarked on a new chapter in his career. In 2009, he established his own design firm, aptly named Paul Jr. Designs, PJD, based in Montgomery, New York. This move came after patiently waiting out a one-year non-compete agreement imposed following his departure from OCC positioning PJD as a direct competitor to his family's established business. The world took notice of Paul Jr.'s design prowess, and his creations expanded beyond custom motorcycles to include garments and personal branding. Paul Jr.'s creativity and expertise in motorcycle design soon found expression in various notable projects. In 2014, he joined forces with Blizzard Entertainment for Azeroth Choppers, a web series that showcased PJD's creation of motorcycles, inspired by Blizzard's immensely popular game World of Warcraft. Expanding his portfolio, Paul Jr. took on projects beyond the realm of gaming. In 2016, he crafted two motorcycles for Paramount Pictures' film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Securing high-profile clients such as Blizzard Entertainment and Paramount, Paul Jr. has undoubtedly found success in the industry, and his hard work has translated into a flourishing business. Continuing to innovate in the motorcycle industry, Paul Jr. recently ventured into the realm of electric bicycles with the launch of PJD Electric. Paul Jr.'s innovative designs and entrepreneurial spirit have not only garnered him recognition, but also financial success. With a roster of employees under his payroll, he has cultivated a thriving enterprise. Remarkably, Paul Jr.'s estimated net worth has surpassed that of his father, reaching a commendable $2 million. This financial achievement stands in contrast to the challenges faced by Paul Sr., reflecting the divergent paths the father and son have taken in their respective careers. The saying, like father, like son, takes on a nuanced meaning in the Tuttle family's current circumstances. While Paul Sr. navigates financial difficulties, his ex-partner and eldest son, Paul Jr., basks in the glow of a prosperous and lucrative career. Mikey Tuttle, Michael Mikey Tutul, the youngest son of Paul Sr., shares his life with his wife, Paula Tutul. Mikey initially joined Orange County Choppers, OCC, in the capacity of an assistant general manager, actively contributing to the daily operations of the shop. His role on the show often provided comedic relief, acting as a buffer amidst the strained relationship between his father, Paul Sr., and his brother, Paul Jr. While the elder Tuttles found varying degrees of success in their post-American chopper endeavors, the journey for the youngest son, Mikey, has been marked by its share of challenges. As the show approached its end, Mikey, seemingly weary of the family business's drama, sought an independent path. In an attempt to showcase his creative side, he opened an art gallery, 
aspiring to sell his paintings and explore a different avenue for self-expression. Unfortunately, this venture proved to be short-lived, and by 2014, the gallery had to close its doors. Undeterred, Mikey then ventured into creating a web series focused on shedding light on New York's homeless communities. However, this initiative took an unexpected turn, leading to legal troubles for the Tuttle family. In 2019, photographer Scott Gunnell filed a lawsuit against Mikey, alleging unauthorized use of his photographs on merchandise without proper permission or royalty payments. The legal dispute concluded in early 2020, with the court awarding Gunnell over $200,000 in damages. Beyond legal challenges, Mikey grappled with alcohol addiction, straining his relationship with his father and resulting in his expulsion from the Tuttle family business. Battling with alcoholism, he took a proactive step by checking himself into rehab to address his challenges and work towards a healthier lifestyle. During this period, Mikey explored new avenues, opening an art gallery to showcase his artistic side. Venturing into the business world, Mikey founded FarQ LLC, a company specializing in pasta sauces. Despite the initial challenges faced by his art gallery, Mikey's entrepreneurial spirit remained undeterred. Seeking rehabilitation and addressing his addiction issues, Mikey eventually returned to the family business, resuming his role at OCC and also lending a hand at Paul Jr. Designs, PJD. While Mikey has faced legal hurdles in recent years, his involvement in both the family business and his personal ventures suggests a degree of resilience. Despite the setbacks, he appears to be navigating through challenges, and with a renewed focus, he seems to be finding stability and success. As Mikey once admitted, I'm kind of nervous about riding the bike up on stage. The bike's a little awkward, and uh, so am I, you know. Currently, Mikey is engaged in a weekly podcast alongside Al Franco, offering insights into their lives, experiences, and reminiscing about the bygone days at OCC. The podcast serves as a platform for candid discussions, covering both the highs and lows of their respective journeys. Additionally, Mikey maintains a strong friendship with Vinny DiMartino, a fellow former OCC member who has made appearances on some of the podcast's latest episodes. Vincent Vinny DiMartino Vincent DiMartino, a standout figure and fan favorite in the early years of the television series, garnered acclaim for both his exceptional skills and engaging personality. Renowned as one of the most skilled and dedicated fabricators under the employ of the Tuttle family, Vinny's departure from Orange County Choppers in 2007 sparked speculation among fans. Many believed that internal conflicts within the company might have led to his decision. Maintaining a strong connection with his childhood friend Paul Jr., Vinny continued to collaborate as an outside consultant on various projects for Paul Jr. Designs. PJD. This collaborative effort extended to special issues featuring Vinny's expertise on PJD. Over the next five years, V-Force Customs flourished, gaining recognition for their bespoke creations. In 2010, he officially joined forces with PJD while concurrently managing V-Force Customs, making notable appearances in the reality series American Chopper Senior vs. Junior. However, with the conclusion of American Chopper, Vinny's interests took a turn toward four-wheel machines, marking the end of his motorcycle-focused endeavors. In 2013, he made the strategic decision to sell off all his motorcycle equipment and utilize the proceeds to launch an automobile servicing workshop named Di Martino Motorsports, located in Walden, New York. This shift in focus showcased Vinny's versatility and adaptability, proving that his skills extended beyond the realm of custom motorcycles. The success of Di Martino Motorsports highlighted Vinny's ability to thrive in new ventures. It's noteworthy that, contrary to some challenges faced by Paul Sr., Vinny experienced continued success in his chosen path. 
Interestingly, Vinny had previously mentioned that his time at Orange County Choppers left him with limited opportunities for career advancement, making his post-OCC journey all the more significant. Rick Petko. Beyond the memorable presence of Vinny, another integral figure in the Tuttle fabricating team is Rick Petko. With a rich history in fabrication and bike building, Rick carved his niche as a skilled blacksmith and metal worker. His expertise extended across various industries, where he mastered the art of bending metal, working with kilns, and handling furnaces. Rick dedicated an impressive 13 years to Orange County Choppers, contributing significantly to their fabrication and bike-building endeavors. Despite the eventual split of the core OCC duo, Rick Petko managed to maintain strong relationships with both Paul Sr. and Jr., even after Paul Jr. departed from OCC, Rick chose to stay back and continued working alongside Paul Sr. Their amicable bond was further evidenced when both two tools were invited to Rick's wedding in 2012, highlighting the enduring camaraderie among the OCC family. Interestingly, Rick's journey in the world of metalworking predates his involvement with American Choppers. His passion for working with metal dates back to high school, and this intrinsic love for the craft persisted even after his time on the show. Following his departure from American Choppers, Rick redirected his focus to his original passion, emerging as the chief fabricator for Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson. In addition to his professional pursuits, Rick found a unique passion in crafting handmade knives during his leisure time. Through his company, RPD and Co., he ventured into making and selling an array of metalware. Notably, his chef knives have gained acclaim for their exceptional quality, catapulting them to best-selling status. Beyond the metalworking realm, Rick's love for motorcycles continues to shine through various activities. For a glimpse into his passion, one needs to look no further than his Facebook page, where he often shares thrilling moments of racing vintage motorcycles on diverse terrains, from sand to dirt. This multifaceted journey showcases Rick Petko's enduring dedication to his craft and his unwavering connection to the world of motorcycles, Cody Connolly. Cody Connolly embarked on his journey with Orange County Choppers at the young age of 14, starting as an intern. His early tenure at Tuttle's workshop began long before the advent of cameras documenting the intricate workings of the motorcycle haven. Being still in high school during his time with OCC, Cody held the distinction of being the youngest member on the show, navigating the unique dynamics of the workshop before it became a television sensation. Despite his initial lack of experience, Cody's remarkable skills in motorcycle fabrication left both viewers and co-stars thoroughly impressed. Upon completing high school, Cody took a significant step in his education by enrolling at the American Motorcycle Institute with the expenses covered by Paul Tutul Sr. and the company. Following in the footsteps of Vinny, who had earlier parted ways with the company to establish his workshop, Cody also decided to bid farewell to the Tuttle domain. However, it appeared that his connection with the Tuttles persisted even after leaving. After spending a couple of years honing his skills at V-Force Customs, Cody found a new professional home at Paul Jr.'s design shop. This marked a shift in his career from motorcycle fabricating to the creative realm of design. Unfortunately, Cody's journey took a legal turn when he filed a lawsuit against his former employers. In the lawsuit, he claimed that he was only compensated for one-third of the episodes he appeared in and sought the compensation promised by Paul Sr. but never delivered. Additionally, Cody alleged that his ideas were used on merchandise without proper royalties before his departure from the show. The case was eventually settled and all charges were dropped, though the legal proceedings strained the working relationship between Cody and the Tuttles. Despite the legal tussle, Cody briefly returned to work alongside Paul Jr. at PJD. However, he eventually shifted away from the world of motorcycles, finding a new professional avenue at a utility company. Interestingly, Cody has deliberately chosen to maintain a low profile in the realm of social media, steering clear of connections with fans and the public at large. 
This intentional detachment adds an element of mystery to Cody Connolly's post-American chopper endeavors, leaving fans curious about his professional pursuits away from the spotlight. Jason Poole Jason Poole's journey into the world of design had its roots in high school, where his initial career plans involved joining the Marine Corps. However, a scholarship opportunity altered his trajectory, leading him to pursue a bachelor's degree in fine arts. This educational choice opened doors for Jason in the design realm, and he initially found himself working on video game projects. One noteworthy project involved the design of a pinball game featuring licensed chopper designs from Orange County Choppers, OCC. Paul Tutul Sr., impressed by Jason's work, invited him onto the set to transition from virtual designs to real-life motorcycles. This marked the beginning of Jason's association with OCC, where his artistic vision and design skills contributed significantly to the shop's projects. Jason's tenure at Orange County Choppers began in 2004, where he brought his artistic talents to the forefront, contributing significantly to the shop's design projects. Despite having worked for the company for several years, Jason's screen time on the show noticeably decreased over time. Nevertheless, his impact on the custom chopper designs was undeniable, earning him a reputation for excellence in his craft. Despite being relatively low-key, Jason Pohl has amassed a net worth exceeding half a million dollars, a testament to the quality of his work and contributions to the success of Orange County Choppers. His calm demeanor and dedicated work ethic resonated with admirers. As he went about his business without complaint about the challenges of the industry, we'll at Orange County Choppers, Jason Pohl's impact extended beyond the television screen, as his designs became synonymous with the brand's identity. Following his tenure with OCC, Jason embarked on a freelance career as an industrial designer. His expertise and creative prowess positioned him as a sought-after professional in the design industry. Presently, Jason Pohl serves as a brand ambassador for SolidWorks, where he not only imparts his valuable experience with the company, but also engages in hands-on experimentation with their diverse tools. Through these efforts, he aims to demonstrate the extensive possibilities that are ice when utilizing SolidWorks in different design scenarios. Additionally, Pohl is at the helm of his own venture. Jason Pohl designs, where he delves into various projects, including the creation of a CNC machine a crucial tool in the manufacturing process. Away from the professional realm, Jason deftly balances his commitments by dedicating time to his wife and children. Beyond the confines of work, he cherishes moments spent with his family, highlighting the importance he places on maintaining a harmonious work-life balance. Mike Rowe Mike Rowe's journey in the television industry extends far beyond his role as the narrator on American Chopper, and his post-show career is a testament to his versatility and success. Departing from American Chopper in 2010 marked a new chapter for Rowe, leading him to become a prominent figure in various shows. Post-American Chopper, Rowe immersed himself in a variety of projects, showcasing his ability to tackle diverse subjects. His notable contributions include hosting Dirty Jobs, Deadliest Catch, Ghost Hunters, and Returning the Favor. Beyond television, Mike Rowe has emerged as a passionate advocate for trade professions. His commitment to highlighting the importance of skilled labor is evident in his efforts to promote and celebrate the often overlooked contributions of workers in essential industries. Not confined to the small screen, Rowe has ventured into the world of entrepreneurship, establishing his own whiskey brand. This venture adds another layer to his multifaceted career, showcasing his entrepreneurial spirit and willingness to explore diverse business opportunities. In his most recent television production, The Story Behind the Story, Rowe delves into intriguing narratives based on his own podcast. Currently residing in San Francisco, Mike Rowe's impact extends beyond television and business ventures. He has received multiple accolades, including the prestigious Distinguished Eagle Scout Award from the Boy Scouts of America. 
This recognition speaks to Roe's commitment to leadership, service, and the values instilled by the scouting movement. Jim Pratt Jim Pratt's narration stint on American Choppers from 2007 to 2012 marked a period of engaging storytelling that followed in the footsteps of Jason Pohl. In addition to his role on American Choppers, Pratt showcased his narrating prowess on other shows, contributing his voice to Out of the Wild, The Alaska Experiment, Season 1 and 2, and Airplane Repo. His distinctive narration style added depth to these shows, capturing the attention of audiences. While many public figures tend to maintain a visible presence even after leaving the spotlight, Jim Pratt opted for a more low-profile approach. Following his departure from American Choppers, he seemingly became elusive in online searches, making it challenging to track his post-show endeavors. Despite this, his impact as a narrator during his tenure on the show remains a notable contribution to the storytelling aspect of the series. A glimpse into Pratt's recent television work places him as a radio announcer in 2019 for Bob Hart's Abishola, a network TV series featuring Billy Gardell and Folake Olowofoyeku. This role indicates his continued involvement in the entertainment industry, albeit in a different capacity. Furthermore, the world of American Chopper expanded beyond its original format through spin-offs and related shows, all aiming to capture the magic of the original series while offering fresh perspectives. Some of these spin-offs delved into the intricacies of bike building, taking viewers deeper into the technical aspects, while others focused on the personal journeys of cast members outside the confines of the OCC workshop. Collaborations, guest appearances, and crossovers with other reality shows further solidified American Chopper's enduring place in pop culture. Turning our attention to the supporting cast, often overshadowed by the Tuttles, they played a pivotal role in shaping the narrative and dynamics of the series. Let's take a moment to catch up with some of the familiar faces that graced the OCC workshop and see where life has taken them post-American Chopper. Jim Quinn, with his tall stature and expert machining skills, stood as one of the mainstays at Orange County Choppers. Serving as the head machinist, Jim's precision and dedication were instrumental in bringing many of OCC's ambitious projects to life. Respected for his no-nonsense approach, Jim continued to channel his passion for machining and engineering after the show concluded. He immersed himself in various automotive projects, lending his expertise to both classic restorations and innovative new builds. Outside the workshop, Jim embraces a quiet life with his family, finding joy in simple pleasures and occasionally revisiting his OCC days with nostalgic fondness. Ron Salisbury, another integral member of the OCC team, brought a unique set of skills to the table. His expertise in electrical systems ensured that each chopper wasn't merely a showpiece, but a fully functional marvel. In the post-American chopper era, Ron expanded his horizons, delving deeper into the world of automotive electronics. His association with various custom projects showcased his sought-after expertise in the industry. Beyond the realm of work, Ron, fueled by his passion for adventure, embarked on a journey exploring the world, capturing his experiences on camera, and sharing glimpses with fans and followers. What does the future hold for the show? A remarkable event unfolded a decade after the cancellation of American Chopper, when Paul Sr. and Jr. reunited for a two-hour special on Discovery Go. The task at hand was to assemble a chopper for the renowned American roofing and siding company, ABC Supply Company. The special, premiering on February 24, 2020, set an eight-week deadline, marking their final collaboration on a chopper from the former Orange County Customs business. Despite the significance of the project, the cooperative effort between father and son faced initial challenges. Paul Sr. asserted that he alone held the creative reins for the chopper build, dismissing any contributions from Powell Jr. This clash of perspectives showcased the rocky start to their collaboration. For Paul Jr., 
the potential restoration of their strained relationship took precedence over the creative differences with his feather. As the special unfolded, the dynamics between senior and junior became central to the narrative. While Paul Senior's stubbornness regarding creative control persisted, Paul Jar grappled with the realization that their collaboration might not lead to the anticipated reconciliation. The episode aimed to capture the essence of closure and the potential for a new chapter, but in true Tootle fashion, the family dynamics quickly reverted to familiar conflicts. Despite the attempt to turn over a new leaf, the unfolding events mirrored the challenges and conflicts that had contributed to the decline of the motorcycle family in the past. As the two tools navigated through the final build and the imminent demolition of the iconic workshop, viewers witnessed a mix of nostalgia, tension, and the enduring complexities of their familial relationships. Despite the drama and conflicts, the special episode provided a glimpse into the indelible legacy of Orange County Choppers. However, with the episode concluding, there have been no publicly disclosed plans for a continuation of the infamous series. The Tootle's journey seems to have found its closing note, leaving fans to reflect on the tumultuous yet captivating legacy of American Chopper. As we take this nostalgic journey to catch up with the talented individuals who contributed to the success of American Chopper, the stories of Jim Quinn and Ron Salisbury reflect the diverse paths forged after the show. From Jim's continued dedication to machining and engineering, to Ron's exploration of automotive electronics and global adventures, their post-American chopper, endeavors showcase the resilience and passion that defined the OCC family. Now we'd love to hear from you. Which cast member's journey resonates with you the most? And what are your fondest memories of American Chopper? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this update, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more glimpses into the lives of the American Chopper cast and crew.